successful experience growing okra. Mainly, it was so rewarding. This okra that I'm growing is one that is especially good for containers, and its name is Jambalaya. It has a very short season. So even if you're in the north, and you know I'm from Canada, if I was still in Canada, I think I could grow it in Canada. And I like to come up here in the morning before it gets too hot. It has been so hot here that I had to water even four times a day. I had no idea that in containers, especially in containers like these that are not on the ground but are up in the air. They don't have any contact with the earth which stays at cooler temperature. Of course the air under the pot is also drying it out. I mean even my okra. This is a plant that's a southern plant. I came up here one day it was just terrible. It was so badly wilted because I missed my 11 o'clock watering by the time I got up here at 3. It was a mess. I am so glad that it has recovered. It's a gorgeous plant. I love the flowers. The okra has the most beautiful flowers. Ah, these are my beloved kids. I love taking care of them. They're beautiful. They make me happy. I have to fertilize them about once a week. You know, I have to check them out. Are their leaves going yellow? Then they need fertilizer. Are they wilting? They need water. I just have to keep looking at them and making sure they're okay. This is the fertilizer I use, BioLife 542. And uh, I get it from Amazon. They've got a number of BioLive um, friendly to the earth fertilizers but I choose the 542 because it's good for vegetables. You should know that it has a fishy smell, which to me, it means that it should be good. I've used fish emulsion fertilizer that goes into water before, and I'm really happy that this is not a liquid fertilizer because if it's a liquid fertilizer and you put it in the watering can then from then on the watering can smells like fish but this um, this is a powder can you see that i just put it on the soil where the plants are and then i make sure that it's very well watered in because you want the fertilizer to seep down through the soil to nourish the roots because it's the roots that eat with plants. The other thing that was ha happening with the okra, the okra started getting a whole bunch of bugs. These Japanese beetles that usually like to eat roses. And when I used to grow soybeans, they love soybeans. I didn't know that they love okra, but these leaves were getting like lace. They had so many holes in them. And now that I fertilize them regularly, these leaves are just gorgeous. You know, you have to keep harvesting your vegetables. Otherwise they start making seed and they don't make any more vegetables. So gosh what a hardship we have to eat this delicious food by the way i don't harvest in the morning because i've read that the plant is putting most of its energy into its roots overnight and as the sun comes up it starts putting its energy into its leaves and into its vegetables so here it's afternoon and I am harvesting the plants for the meal tonight. The plants have had the whole day to accumulate sunshine in their leaves and therefore 
The vegetables are now full of all kinds of nutrients. You know, we've had a couple of days of rain, and that means that I haven't been out here harvesting. And so we've got some okra that is really too big. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not going to harvest it and cook it. It just means that they're going to be a little bit woody, and we're just going to have to spit out the woody parts of the okra. I love okra. I'm from Canada. I never ate okra till I moved to Virginia. In fact, it was uh, when I was working at NASA, the NASA cafeteria used to um, make breaded sliced okra. Oh, I just loved it. Now that I'm being more careful of my weight, I don't ever bread or deep fry anything, but I find that I really like them just steamed. But that's just me. Do you see this okra blossom here? If you're growing okra and you see a flower that's like that, that is sort of wrinkled up, that is not actually a bud. That is the flower that has finished blooming. It's been fertilized or pollinated. And underneath at the base of that flower is a baby okra. And that's what happened with these here that are growing beside it on this growing tip. And what's gonna happen is that flower all by itself is going to fall off and end up on the ground. So if you're growing okra for the first time and that happens, don't worry, there is nothing wrong. That's just the way the okra makes okra. I clean up the spent okra blossoms because if I leave them there, after a while they get sort of slimy. <laughs> I've learned that the hard way. So I find it's much, much better to just pick them up soon as they drop. The garden's got so big now that there's nowhere almost for me to stand. And it's one of the reasons I come up here in the morning when I've still got these long clothes that I wear to protect myself from getting tick bites when I'm out walking. And it helps to protect me from all the dew on the leaves. And also these leaves, although they're gorgeous, they have little sort of prickles on the bottom of them. I don't know, it's not real, real prickles. They just sort of rub like a cat's tongue. You know how a cat's tongue is so rough when it licks you. This okra that's behind me, it's a plant that grows up and it's making its new fruit, vegetables on the growing tip, which is the part that's going up. And when those first okra were ready, then I cut them off and we cooked them and ate them, which was wonderful. And the plant just keeps growing up. They're getting so tall, they're taller than me now. Well, we've come to the end of the season and the okra has gotten so tall that I'm too short to harvest it. So I had to ask my husband, to come and harvest the okra for me. Yay! <laughs> Author of When We Were Gods, which is a chronicle of my past life memories of the marvelous world of Atlantis. While I was writing the book, I received a visit from an otherworldly being, Pan, Lord of the Wild. He said that he had a message for mankind. So I gave him a chapter in the book. And Pan said that nature really needed our help. And amazingly, what nature wants the most from us is appreciation for all that it does for us. And he made the suggestion that we all grow something. And you know, when you grow something, you find out it's not that easy. 
to make things grow. And in my video on growing this little container garden up on my balcony, I had a number of failures, but then I had to find out what to do to make them work. And it did really help me to appreciate all that nature does, because just think of that woods behind me. It's not going through the kind of trouble I had to go through, watering, fertilizing, all the things I had to do. Pan's message that was just part of it and I think it's very important